Hello, welcome to the Battling Barrow. My name's Kev and we're going to do another crafting video. Um, this one isn't about learning new techniques or anything of the like. It's just to show you if you're new to crafting and you're watching crafters on YouTube such as myself on this channel and I always say you've got to use this material and sometimes that's just a suggestion. You don't have to. You, like So the point of this one is just recently I've been redoing my um, dungeon tiles and I use XPS foam. Now I know a lot of people in certain countries can't get hold of XPS foam but I can get hold of alternative methods, uh, uh, materials such as foam board um, which seems to be more readily available to people. Uh, so I'm going to show you um, that you can use foam board to make the dungeon tiles and I, the whole point of me creating my tiles in the previous video uh, is I want to be able to set up completely and play uh, Castle Caldwell. Um, it's a bit of a basic dungeon crawler, but uh, this is what the map looks like. And so in the previous videos we created enough tiles to set up all these squarish rooms here. But this has four um, circular towers. So that is what we're going to create today. Um, so um, just one thing to note, if you look at these, they have a square here. So it's going to be circle, three quarters, and a square uh, entranceway into it as well, or square wallway bit. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, but for this, I'm going to utilize a uh, foam board. And also, sometimes you may not have the correct size uh, material you need as well. So you might need to join bits together. So that's what this video is about, it's using alternative materials and having not the right size. Just so people at home who may not craft because they don't have the exact materials can have a go. So that's the point of this video. It's a very simple, basic video. If you've watched the dungeon tile video, the techniques you're gonna learn are that, uh, just that really. Uh, you might learn how to cut a circular room who knows, but the whole point is just to show you, you can use alternative uh, materials. So instead of listening to me waffle on, let's get the craft going. One of the downsides to not using XPS foam is the size. Uh, if you're using um, foam board, it's gonna come invariably in A4. You can buy it in different sizes, but A4 is probably one that's gonna be easier to get. So if you're working in A4, you're gonna have to um, cut for two pieces to fit together so here I need a 10 by 10 square but what I want to do is the join I can just put cut a bit that's the extra width of the A4 sheet to make it 10 inches but th that'll be a join and plus if you've got a grid I want to work it so that join is part of the grid so to do this once I've got the heights one length of both set to uh, 10 inches I can measure across and I can work out how many squares I can get in so using the uh, A4 uncut bit I can measure across my squares are an inch and a quarter uh, so I need to work out how many squares I can get in and it comes to I can fit seven and a half inches on here and that will come to six squares so I'm just going to cut off at seven and a half inches Now on the smaller bit, I need to come work out two squares. So that's gonna be two and a half inches and I can divide that up into one and a quarter inch squares now. And I'll just cut that down to size. Now this is gonna be a circular room. So what I wanna do is find the center point of the card. So I'm gonna measure up five inches down horizontally and five inches down vertically and put a little cross line marking the center of the piece. Now I'm going to get a compass and I'm going to extend it to 5 inches and punch a hole in the middle and use that to draw around 3 quarters of the board because the tower pieces have flats on, uh, if you look at the Caldwell map you can see what I'm trying to achieve. 
it will have a flat on two sides effectively. So I'm just going to draw a circle around three quarters. This is actually quite tricky. If this was one complete piece, it wouldn't be as difficult, but being I'm trying to make do with certain materials. When that is done, before I cut it out, I am going to come in on the other side and peel off the card backing on the other side. Certain foam boards in this is quite tricky, especially in the UK. Uh, this comes from Hobbycraft store and it actually come off surprisingly easy. I've had stuff that is very difficult to uh, tear off and I'm always jealous of those uh, people in America and Canada who have dollar store foam board and can rip it off with ease. So I was surprised and pleased with how easy this come off. Once I've peeled the backing off, it's time to come in and do the grid. It's easier to draw the grid in before we cut the circle out as you won't have to worry about trying to measure it all up. Uh, so at this stage, it's almost like working with XPS foam, but foam board is a wee bit softer. I will use a ballpoint pen just to engrave the grid into the foam board. And you can see that together there, it's almost seamless where we've got the join on the grid line. Now it's time to cut out the circle. Uh, for this, sharp blade, fresh blade, uh, which I have to admit I didn't do here, so it gets a slight rough cut, but ho-hum. And I do a light pass cutting the top bit of card first, and then put a bit more pressure in, and cut straight through the foam in one smooth, hopefully, cut. Next up, come in with some 1mm chipboard and mark out a 10 inch by 10 inch square. Cut that out using the craft knife. And get some PVA glue, apply it to the back of the two foam board pieces and glue this onto the chipboard. Easier to glue the smaller piece on first and then come in with this bigger piece and line up the grid. Whilst it's drying to weigh it down, just put a load of heavy hardback books on. Once uh, it's dry, I gonna even though it's already a grid join, I'm gonna come in with the ballpoint men and go along the grid join just to fold the end in so it matches the style of the other blocks. And now I'm gonna come in with the texture roller that was I showed you how to make in the previous dungeon tile videos and I'm just going to use that to get a nice dungeon floor texture in quick and easy. Saves all that tin foil or rock malarkey. With that come in with a pair of scissors and cut round the circle bit to remove the unneeded chipboard. Paint it with the uh, Black Magic Craft Mod Podge, uh, Mod Podge and Black Paint, acrylic paint. Remembering to paint the edges here so you get got those covered. You want quite a heavy coating on this because, as mentioned earlier, foam board is slightly more uh, delicate than XPS foam. So you want a nice, hard, good covering of this. When that's dry, come in with a dry brush of a grey. If you are a GW paint person, think Dawnstone, uh, but this is just a uh, artist acrylic grey. Once that's done, dry a dry brush of a tan colour. Uh, this is a tan called Coastline, which is a test pot paint from Wilkinson's, uh, Usapi Bone if you're a GW uh, painter, but it's effectively just a cream tan beige colour. Allow that to completely dry uh, before the wash, otherwise it will reactivate the paint and you don't want that. And just come in now with a, a black wash. This is just black ink, brown paint, water and detergent that I use in my projects. And I just paint that all over.
and when all that is dry this is how they look um, yeah not an impressive piece but that wasn't the purpose of this video um, did this just to show you that you can in fact use um, different materials that aren't necessarily said what the terrain creators using you can use alternatives and so when you see me use XPS foam if all you've got is um, foam board you can use it, don't worry about it, just use it. Um, I wanted to do this because I wanted to set up the full board for Caldwell Castle, a classic uh, Beckme Dungeons and Dragons mod uh, module. And that has four circular towers of this size, so I've got these. But these could also be used for, is it Kragma Castle in Lost Mines of Fandelva, as that has a circular um, towers. And this is the top left hand side. I uh, would just have to add some walls in, add smaller circles uh, for the other parts of it, but the technique would be very much the same. And I may even like do a video on it, but I may even create that so I can play that at any point I like. But before we, uh, I'm going to have a quick setup of just showing this in uh, at, at setup as um, uh, Cool Girl Castle. But before we do that, I'd just like to take the, uh, take the time to say thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do like, and comment if you haven't already have a subscribe because we do lots of ter terrain creating videos and have a look at different board games and rpg games and war games and hopefully return to the channel soon will be playthroughs and let's plays and battle reports and that sort of thing with a uh, an opponent uh things going well as the world as they are i hope you're safe and well until the next video guys take care